Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are gonna make a card, and yes, it's been a minute since I made a card. <laughs> I've had a lot of comments lately saying, Lindsay, will you do any more card tutorials? Um, and absolutely. In fact, I've got a bunch of different things to play with and I'm excited to bring them to you, but um, I've just been busy getting a class ready. So today we have one of many card tutorials. And you can see that I pretty much did the same layout, just with different colors and different images. And supplies I'm using today are from our sponsor, TopFlightStamps.com. And I'm using stamps by Darkroom Door. We've got this gorgeous uh, button stamp. We've got this nice background word block stamp. And then we've got a couple sewing icons. I'll be using the thread in the demo we do today, but um, you could do whatever icon you like. Uh, it's completely up to you. In fact, you could do this in other themes if you want. If you're not familiar with topflightstamps.com, they find the best stamps all over the world and bring them back to us here in the United States. So they're all imported stamps from different countries, a gorgeous variety of things. And I highly recommend you give them a look if you're looking for something kind of unique and different. So we're gonna start off with our big button stamp here. I've got it just like right, um, right plain. You don't need to put it on a block or anything. And what you're gonna do is just ink it up with a nice brown ink. I'm using the uh, VersaFine Claire in Acorn. So it's not their darkest brown. It's kind of a soft, warm brown, but it looks pretty dark once you put it on that white paper. So this is a technique I like when doing a large background stamp, um, especially when I need to cover most of a card and I need to have, um, I wanna have my placement pretty exact. And that's just by putting it rubber side up on my table. And this is going to give me a really good impression. So I've got my folded card base here that I just made with a piece of eight and a half by 11 um, heavyweight cardstock cut in half. I get the uh, heavyweight cardstock from the craft store. I get the stuff that's 110 pounds. Um, Michael's, I really like the kind they have at Michael's. Um, Joanne's has it too and other craft stores might have it as well. So you wanna put it down and try not to move it. And then you wanna put a piece of scrap paper on top because can you see there's extra rubber showing? You don't wanna get that all over your hands because if you get ink all over your hands, you're gonna get it all over your card where you don't want it. And then what you wanna do is hold the whole thing together, the whole sandwich together with one hand and then rub over with your other hand and then swap hands. And this is gonna give you a perfect impression. Um, of course, if you had a Misty or you had some other tool that you like to use, you can totally use that, but I don't and this works great for me. I am an old school stamper, so um, I like to use the old school techniques. And we're just gonna gently lift this up so we don't smear it, and there we get a beautiful impression. Now, this stamp is just a bit shy of going right out to the edge on my A2 size card, so what I'm going to do is add a decorative element. And what I want to do is actually just do a piece of torn paper, so I've got this little scrap of torn paper. Now, here's a tip for you. When I'm doing cards, oftentimes I have way, because I'll, I'll use like scrapbook paper, right? So I'll have a bunch of leftovers. So what I do when I have a bunch of like leftover cards that are in like the same theme, I'll put them just in a little plastic pocket. I get these little CD pockets or you can use an envelope. It really doesn't matter. Page protector would be fine. And then I'll take all the extra little um, stamped images and papers and die cuts. Like I have these cute little like ones here. I put them all together with their, um, with the other pieces from that same line of papers. And then when I go, want to go to make cards again, say I'm making sewing, sewing themed cards, I just grab this and I'm good to go. So there's a little tip for making the most out of your supplies. So I want this to have a little bit of a color to it. So what I'm gonna do is just grab my scrap paper again and I'm gonna ink this up. And I'm using this little uh, magic mushroom blender. I'm, I'm trying these out, it's the first time I've used them so I don't really have um, much of an opinion on them yet except you know they're working really well for me. And I'm just going to ink them up. You can use whatever blender you have, whether it's a blending brush or a sponge. I'm just gonna ink this up with this really light ink. This is called Innocent Pink, and it's a Gina K ink. And then I'm gonna give this a little spritz with my sprayer. I don't wanna spray my paper though. Um, just one time, little spritz. And then I'm just gonna kinda ink it up. And you don't have to clean these if you're using dye-based ink, which is nice. It's pretty much like a, um, a lot like a, like a Ranger foam blender, except you don't have the edge, which is, which is kind of what would throw me off. I have some homemade ones I made with some makeup sponges too that work really great, but still I sometimes get that the, like one of the edges will give me kind of an awkward um, line. So I'm hoping that these, so far right out of the gate, they're working great. Um, so I'm really, I'm really pleased with that. Now I want the edge of my paper to have a little bit of a contrast. So I'm gonna go with a darker ink. This is Dusty Rose. So, you know, whatever pinks you have, you don't have to have 
any particular brand. Just, you know, have some dye inks, have some pigment inks, so you have variety. I like the pigment inks or the hybrid inks for how nicely they stamp. You see what a good impression I got there? Um, but I like the dye inks for blending and things like that. So you could leave it like that. You could blend it out a little bit if you want to soften it. I'm pretty happy with the way that looks. And just got to make sure I get the right caps on the right ink pads. And then I am going to actually let that dry for a minute because the ink is still kind of wet. And while that's drying, I'm going to stamp my focal image. And I'm going to use, again, the Versify and Clear ink because I want to make sure I get a really good impression. I'm going to use this, um, this uh, thread, needle and thread. And I've also cut a mask out. So what I did was I stamped it on a post-it note too and I cut that out. And then I save this and I keep it in with the stamp. I stick it right in the little stamp packet. My stamp came in. I keep it with it so I don't have to cut that again. I can use it tons and tons of times before I need to make a new one. And there's a little tip for you because it'll make your card making go so much faster. So this time I'm using the darker ink that's called Pinecone. It's just a darker brown. You could use the same brown honestly, but I wanted it just to pop a little bit more so I used the darker one because I had it. Certainly don't have to have both. Um, and I'm just going to try to center that up fairly well and I'm going to stamp. Now one of the things that I see people getting wrong when they stamp quite a bit is not giving the ink a long enough time to transfer from the stamp onto the paper. And so I see people with misties and they, they stamp it like two or three times to get a good impression. If you give the ink time for the ink to go from the stamp onto the paper, it should not require that. So look at that, we got a perfect impression, no special tools required. Just give it time, don't be in a rush. And I realize the irony of that, and I'm saying that as I talk a million miles an hour. Um, I'm sorry, I just talk fast. Now, the neat thing about the Versify and Clear ink is that you can use this with, um, you can do watercolor over it and it's not gonna smear. And I'm just gonna give this a quick blast with my heat tool, just to make sure it's completely dry before I move on. I'm not going to color it next. What I'm going to do is actually put my mask on top and the reason I'm doing this next and the reason I dry, dried it is because the adhesive from the edge of my sticky note, so I stamped it kind of like that so I'd have adhesive on the top, that could pick up my ink if it wasn't dry. So there's a little bit of patience involved with card making that I think a lot of people don't quite realize. So we're going to just line that up as good as we can. And then what I'm going to do is do that same technique again, but with this text block stamp that I showed you at the beginning of the video. Don't worry if your thing's a little crooked, it's not really going to matter. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to ink it up with that darker pink ink that we used on the edge, because I want this to be a little bit darker. And I'm using an ink cube. And honestly, I'd have to say that if you're getting into stamping, I think one of the things that I would have done differently is that I would have just gone with the mini ink cubes. I mean, it's nice if you're doing big backgrounds to have the big, big ink cubes, but you can get so much more for your money and have so much more variety in a small space with the mini ink cubes. So I would definitely recommend that. And then get re-inkers for them because they will go dry faster because they're smaller ink cubes. All right, so now what we're going to do, we've got our mask on. Don't forget that. We're going to put that right on top of our background. Make sure you're covering the entire area. And let's see, this is an A2 card. This is, um, you know, five and a quarter, no, four and a quarter by five and a half. And this is about two and a half by, oh, I could line right up on my grid probably. Well, we'll do that after. I don't want to smudge it while it's on the ink. Um, this is a smaller card. <laughs> I'm going to move that out of the way. I think we're getting a little shadow there. Give it a good rub. Make sure we're getting a good contact. And you really want to make sure you get good contact because you've got a mask on there. So you've got to make sure that you're getting that pressed down right along that post-it note. Okay. We're going to pull that up without moving it. And there we go. we got a really nice look. It didn't stamp perfectly there, but that's not going to be a big deal because we're going to do some inking. And to do the inking, we're going to pull back our scrap paper and we're going to grab our lighter ink, okay? And we're gonna grab our mushroom here or whatever you use for a blender. I'll have a review on these after I've used them a few uh, on a few cards. I just, I don't like to really give opinions on stuff until I've used it. Um, or I should say, I could give an opinion, but I, I don't like to do a review or anything until I've used something a bit. You can, you know, whatever blender you're good with, you like the most, you're the most used to, used to that's gonna work the best for you. And I will link all the products I used in the video description so you can find them. Or you can obviously use what you have because this is a layout and these are techniques that you can adapt 
to whatever you want to do. Now, if you want a little bit more contrast, um, and get, keep in mind that if you do too much of this other color, it will cover up all those lovely sewing words. So I would be kind of, I just kind of go easy with it, but you can take the darker color. I just, I have one of these for pink. I don't need to clean it between colors. Um, it's fine. And I'm just gonna just kind of gently whisk off a little bit of dark around the thread of the spool of thread just to give it a little bit of shadow and contrast. But I don't want to cover up all of my words. Pay no attention to the crazy noises <laughs> that you hear in my house. Kids are home, you know how it is. All right, so that's pretty much how I want it. I think I will also give it a little bit of brown on the edges, so I'll just do that right now. And I'm just using some reg some of that heavyweight cardstock that we made the card base out of. What I did was I actually went through my stash, and I did a video on this back at the beginning of quarantine. On um, I went through all my scraps and I, I made a bunch of backgrounds and I also cut down my solid scraps to normal to like very easy to use sizes. So uh, three inches by four inches. That's what this this um, card is. And what I did, I'll show you real quick. I stored them. So what I did was I cut um, any cardstock that was big enough down to four inches by five and a quarter. So I'd have all these layering panels ready to go. And then I also, also just cut and folded a bunch of card bases so I'd have those ready to go. And then any of my other cardstock scraps that were big enough, I cut down to three by four. So they would be great for like putting inside a card with a piece of washi tape for a removable note, or if I needed a layering uh, piece or something to die cut, just kept everything really organized and easy to find. And I put it in rainbow order in these little bins that I got at the dollar store, I think. Um, so it's really easy for me to put a card together quickly. And that's half the battle, right? Finding the time to do our hobby. All right, so now what we're gonna do is some coloring and I'm gonna zoom in for that because it's always good to see that in a little more detail. We're gonna remove our mask. And there, isn't that, that's so satisfying. Don't you think that's satisfying? I love it, I love it. All right, so what we're gonna do first is we are going to do the spool. And yeah, I know this is crooked. I probably should have stamped it a little straighter, but you know. You can stamp it straight when you're doing it. It's hard to talk and make a card at the same time, guys. I'm gonna start by putting in some shadow on the spool. I'm gonna use a variety of the um, real brush markers. I've got the classic, the first one to hit the, hit the uh, market, the Zig Real Color, Clean Color Real Brush Marker here. Um, but you will find that it doesn't really matter what brand you have, they all work together as well. So if you started off with one brand and then you tried another brand, um, I recommend keeping them all together and just, um, you know, mixing and matching. And then I'm gonna grab a Genuine Crafts brand and I'm gonna blend that out. Because it's, I had the right color. You'll find that like often the colors aren't exact matches for each other. So if you buy like a set of 24 Zigs and a set of um, 48 Arteza and a set of, you know, 36 Ahuhu, you're gonna have some similar colors, but you're also gonna have some unique colors and you mix them and match them so you get the best variety. You get some good dimension there. I think if you need to go in and add more of the shadow over that, you can. The nice thing about the real brush markers as opposed to like the felt tip Tombows is that you do have a little bit more control. Like I can use a very little pressure and just kind of get a really just a little um, blush of color or I can color more firmly and it doesn't abrade the paper which is what happens with the felt tip markers. They kind of um, rough up the paper a little bit and then it gets darker and darker and you can't blend it very well. So I do think this is a really nice innovation in, um, in card making. I definitely recommend giving these a try, especially now that you can find them for a cheaper price. Now these are not the best for doing like if you want to color on the rubber stamp and then stamp with the ink, these are not great for that. Your felt tip ones, your tombos are much better for that. And of course, like writing inside a card, your tombos are better for that. If you're doing brush lettering all fancy, these would probably be better, but um, if you're just trying to write a note to somebody, these are not as good for that. So they all have their purpose. Um, it just depends on what you like to do most. Uh, if you like to color, I highly recommend these. And this is just, you know, regular cardstock. This isn't Bristol or anything fancy. It's not watercolor paper or marker paper. It's just, you know, it's just your regular cardstock that I had, you know, in my in my scrap stash. And it, and it just works great. So very pleased with that. All right. The next thing I'm going to do is do our thread. And I want to contrast. So I wanted kind of like a greeny pink, uh, greeny blue tealy color to contrast the pink. 
So I've got a couple colors of that here. Again, I'm going to start with my dark and I'm going to start at the edge and I'm just going to wisp in that color. This is an, Ar this is an Arteza, yeah, this Arteza has a bigger, um, a bigger tip. I like that personally because you can still get the fine detail if you use it like kind of at a 90 degree angle with the paper. But if you, um, if you use it on its edge, you can get a nice wide band of color. I think it would make a difference if you were doing brush lettering though because the size of the brush really determines the size of your letters. But when you're coloring, as long as you can get that fine tip on the end, you're usually pretty good. So just again, it depends on what you want them for. There's no better or worse. It's well, I mean, sometimes there is, but in the brands that I'm, you know, referencing here, it's really no better or worse. It's just what are you going to use it for? What's what's best for you? Just like with blenders or anything else. And now I'm going to go over it with the lighter color. This is actually pretty much how you do it with a uh, like a Copic marker. You just want to make sure you have a good paper that's um, that is um, friendly, Copic marker friendly. Like I would use my Nina cardstock, my Nina Classic Crest, not the Nina from Target or Walmart. That's a uh, index. It's it's different. It's lighter weight and it doesn't. Um, doesn't have the same sizing on it. All right, for the needle, I'm going to use a silver gel pen. Oh, you know what I'll do before that? I'm going to do a little bit of pink uh, inside the eye of the needle. There we go. I find it's also easier to like match colors with the brush pens, and this is a Mozart or Mozart. Um, because you're, it's not like darkening the paper, you can keep layering it up until you get to what you want. So that's been a really nice, uh, there we go, didn't want to run. If you had a gel pen, if your paper's damp at all, it doesn't, it wants to skip on you. And if you had any like missed areas with your inking, you could hit that with the, um, with the marker as well, the little pink one. Very gently, you won't even see. Once it blends in with the inks that are there, you won't even be able to tell. Now, remember when I said some things are good with the uh, regular, like the old-fashioned Tombow type markers, like the felt tips? This would be a uh, situation where it's better to have the felt tip. Like if I want to go and add some green on this, over this string, I'm going to get a better, uh, it's going to work a little bit better to have the felt tip. And there, that is all set. Now we can put our card together. And the first thing we're going to do is add this along the edge. I'm just going to use some double-sided tape for that. Oh, we need to zoom out because we are way too close. There we go. And this was a paper that I actually bought by the sheet at, um, at a stamp show. Um, I find that I tend to like to make my own backgrounds a lot. So if I do buy pattern paper, I am much better off just to buy it by the sheet and get exactly what I want because if I buy a big pad, I tend to have a bunch of um, a bunch of excess, like stuff I'll never use, and just too much of it. I used to go through it when I was doing like a lot of like party favors and classroom volunteering and stuff like that, but I just don't go through it now. So it's so much more affordable for me to buy the sheets of paper that I like and and use every scrap of it, um, and so much less goes to waste. Now I'm gonna trim, add a little trim here. I had this vintage lace that I thought was really pretty. I knew I wanted to have something soft on this because it's sewing themed. And I thought it would be really just kind of, um, I don't know, it's kind of prissy, but you know, in a, in a good way. <laughs> I thought that'd be really cute there. So it just gives me some texture and a little bit of um, uh, a little dimension. So I'm gonna start by just adding a little bit of hot glue here, very, very gently. Right here at the edge so I can tack down the end. And I'm gonna hold it taut just off of the card and just hold it for a second and let that set. So you'll just want to, so don't cut your, your ribbon until you're doing this because um, you're going to want to hold it off the edge. If I try to hold it on top of the ribbon, I could burn myself. And I don't want to burn my hands off. Don't burn your hands off, friends. A little uh, inside joke for the OG Fruit Craft fans. And then I'm going to do a little line of, um, of this glue. I know, this is not the fanciest glue gun. And it doesn't put the smallest line of glue, but... It works for me. I like that it has its dual temperature. Not that it ever really goes, it's always on high. <laughs> but uh, 
Yeah, I like that one. I like the Sure Bonders. They seem to last. I, I'm pretty hard on glue guns. They seem to last the best. Now, once that's dry, and it doesn't doesn't usually take too long with a cloth to paper, I find, then you just want to go and snip each end. I like to snip from the back side. Pay no attention to any little smudges you see at the back. That's That doesn't bother me, having a smudge on the back. I mean, just a little one, it's not a big deal, I don't think. I mean, yeah, you can put paper on it if it bothers you. It doesn't bother me. All right, and then we've got our focal image. It can go there. I'm just going to set it down there for a minute. Oh, and I had a bunch of leftover die cuts from another project. I have this little bobbin. So I want to use that in our card, and I want it to look nice and vintage -y. So I'm going to use a little Desert Sand Memento ink and this brown sponge. I've already sprayed it once, so hopefully it's already got some glue strings happening here. I like that I get a nice uniform color here. It's very user friendly so far. Only used it like today. You're seeing it, folks. Okay, and I think I'll also just give it a little bit of an edging. You're not going to see the sides of it, so I'm going to put some thread on it. And this is where you can use any of like, you could use thin ribbon, you could use embroidery floss, baker's twine, whatever you have, whatever you like. It's up to you. I'm going to grab some baker's twine. Oops, oh my goodness, I just banged the camera. You guys okay? All right, good. I'm going to add a little bit of baker's twine. Just going to wrap it around. This is the back side you're seeing right here. Trying to be neat. Don't have to be. So what you, you can do it neat, you can do it messy. You can make it really thick by putting on like loads and loads of it. I usually just try to do one like fairly even row just to make things easier mailing wise. All right, we'll give it a little snip and we'll put some hot glue on the back of this and we will actually, let's figure out where we're going to put everything first. Let's, uh, let's stick this down to our card base. Let's get this stuff out of the way. All right, I'm going to use foam tape for this to give it a little dimension. This is a fairly thin foam tape. This is, um, just a, just a thin tape that you can tear. I like that for these backgrounds because... You don't end up with the denting or the smushing that you might if you used a thicker, smaller pieces of a thicker tape. And yeah, you could use a full piece of fun foam. I think um, Jennifer McGuire does that. That looks real nice. I always worry about the. I mean, well, I'm putting foam into the landfill, but I don't know. I don't know. I think of like a full sheet. Just seems to me. I'm not judging anybody. Um, it just seems like that's a. It's kind of. I don't know, it's, eh, I don't know. I was just thinking it's kind of wasteful, but I guess this is kind of wasteful too, so. I, I never have any delusions that people are keeping my cards forever and ever, so. What I'll often do is just put a, like I mentioned before, I'll take one of those small cardstock scraps and I'll tape it into the card with removable washi tape and just, you know, put a, I have a little stamp that says, you know, feel free to use reuse the card, <laughs> you know, remove this note and reuse the card. Or you could use even a post-it note on the inside to write your message and then at least it gets another use before it gets um, it gets tossed which is which is nice I think oh my gosh I should edit this out I was like no no I'm practicing I'm gonna do this in all in one take so how are you guys doing <laughs> you having a good summer I hope okay here we go <laughs> enough small talk we got cards to make we'll stick that down there um, I had these leftovers. Little thanks so much. Little thing. Or I'll put it. Let's 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 figure things out. Uh, I'll probably just keep the layout the same as I did on the other cards. I'm gonna put a little glue on the back and try to tack these little ends down. And hopefully, if I'm fast enough, I can also stick it to my card at the same time. There. Oh, I'm kind of afraid to get my fingers in that. There we go. Ooh, that's hot. That is hot. Yikes. All right. We'll stick that right there. I like that. Oh, and then I've got some little die cut buttons that I want to... You know, if you have one thing that's crooked, if you put other things on crooked, it totally works. So there's a little, there's a little top tip for you there. If you can't glue things on straight, glue your other things on crooked and nobody will even know. Let's throw, let's ink up a few of these little die cut buttons. This is an old, um, 
It's an old die. I actually really like it. It was um, I, it's probably one of my most used dies in my whole stash. It is um, oh, you know what? I want to ink this side, not that side. It was from Sizzix and Stampin' Up a long time ago. Maybe they still sell it like at Sizzix. I have no idea, but um, they're just little buttons and they emboss and cut at the same time. You can also find there's other um, companies that have like just uh, button die cuts, so you could like die cut them out of pattern paper, or you know punch out some circles, stack them up, and just stamp on the top with button stamps. A lot of options. Another thing you could do, you can actually take your button stamp and you could use a little paper punch, a uh, circle punch, and punch out a bunch of buttons and use those for embellishments. What I would do is I would punch, like, say this button, then I would take that same punch and punch out a bunch of pieces of cardstock, and then I would glue it together so you have a dimensional looking button there. That would totally work just as well. Just be a little more time consuming. All right, now we're gonna we're gonna glue the rest of this together. I haven't decided if I want to ink the edges of that or anything. Let's see. Else. I'm just gonna kinda kinda glue and tuck basically. I like kind of clustering my embellishments. I think that looks nice. It just gives it a um gives it a really cohesive look. Oh, do I want this down here? Really want to disguise the fact that that is so very crooked. <laughs> that the that the stamping was so very crooked. So yeah, I know. Points for the misty, right? <laughs> That's all right. I say it has charm. If I wanted a perfect card, I'd go to Hallmark. I want a, uh, I want an imperfect hot mess card. <laughs> what kind of card do you want? Let me know in the comments below. All right, I think I'm ready to put that thing down on this side uh, down. Uh, another another fun thing for you, OG frugal crafter fans. Yes, still using the foam squares. Still got them. All right, we will put that. I think we'll put it up here. I don't know how to. I don't know. Just don't press it down. You can kind of move it around a little bit and figure out exactly. Oh, do I want it down that low? Oh, I kind of like that. Now I think I'll just tuck a few other little buttons. We'll go to town on these because they're you know they're lightweight. You don't need to worry about. Um, you don't need to worry about them like being heavy in the mail. I don't like that. Yeah, then maybe that's too many. Maybe we just need three. Looks like a wagon. It looks like wagon wheels. I don't like that. There. Nah, that's all right. Sometimes you just gotta glue and move on. Holy moly, that is like ill-advised. Do not try to hot glue something that tiny. Use a glue dot. Which side do I want to use? I want to use this side. Yep, use a glue dot, friends. Don't be a hero. Oh, I'm going to do it again, though, because that's what I have handy. Take one for the card-making team here. If you get a bunch of... um. A bunch of glue strings, just blast it with your heat tool. Look, I got mine right here. If you hit it with your heat tool, it'll like make the glue strings magically disappear. Somehow. I don't know. It works. All right, there we go. <laughs> we have made a card. Ooh. We did it, guys. We did it. It's been a while. A little rusty, but we prevailed. There we go, sewing theme cards. Aren't they nice? I hope you enjoyed this. Please give me a thumbs up if you did. I'll have all of these products linked down below. You can visit our sponsor at topflightstamps.com and find all of the gorgeous things that they have scoured the earth to bring us here in the United States. So check it out. I hope you're having a wonderful day, a great summer, and uh, let me know what you think about this in the comments below. We'll see you next time and happy crafting.